In today's video, I'm going to show you these 3D printed models that I made for Kit Fox Series 7. I'll show you why I made them, how I made them, and some hurdles that I overcame. I'll show you where you can download these files so that you can save a ton of time shaping parts. So stay tuned. Welcome to Let's Build This. My name is David, and I love to design, build, and fly. Join me as we discover those three areas and more. All right, before we jump into that, I want to give you an update on where I'm at with my Avid Flyer Mark IV build. Some of you have been asking what I've been up to. The first thing you might notice is that I actually sold off the wingtips from the Speed Wings. They're built for a Model A or Model B Avid Flyer. They don't have wing tips, or excuse me, they don't have wing tanks in them. And uh, so I decided, you know, rather than, you know, take out the ribs, put the wing tanks in and all of that, I'd rather just sell these off to someone who has an Avid Flyer Model A or Model B, someone that could just use these and just use the existing tank in that model. And the other reason for it is that I've got these stole ribs, and so I plan to build out a completely new wing for this aircraft anyway. So I sold the wing tips off to a guy named Carl. Uh, once he gets those wings built, he's going to actually ship me back his wing tips. So if you're interested in these wings, hit me up. And you probably also noticed these bush gear and wheels hanging on the wall. I took them off my aircraft. And the reason for that is because I'm doing some welding on the fuselage and I need to be able to kind of get in at different angles. And so I need to be able to flip my aircraft. So the way that I'm able to rotate my aircraft rather than build a full rotisserie for it, I actually just used an engine stand and then I just mounted it directly to it and added this wood plate to the backside. Then on the back end, I built this stand and welded up this bracket and bolted it on. Then I just built this strap so that it could balance and center itself. Then all I've got to do is pull this pin on the engine mount, rotate it 90 degrees, and place the pin back in place. Then whenever I'm not working on the aircraft, I just rest it back on the stand. Then the other project I've been working on is building this fabrication station for building smaller parts. And it's got some pretty convenient features, so look for that in an upcoming video. And the other reason I haven't been out here very much is because it is freezing outside. So I've stayed inside where it's warm, creating CAD files. All right, now for those parts that you came for. The Avid Flyer that I just showed you and the Kit Fox, they're really almost identical aircraft. There are some differences, but it all started originally with the Avid Flyer back in 1983. Kit Fox got involved early on, and then they branched off and kind of did their own thing. The models A through C and the Mark IV Avid and the models 1 through 4 on the Kit Fox, they're very similar. They closely match each other. And then the Kit Fox continued to progress with the Series 5, 6, and now the Series 7. So they're all very similar. They all feature a folding wing, and then they use flaperons, which does roll control. It also allows you to use it as a flap so you can pitch and slow your airspeed down. So I designed these parts, they're flaperon wingtips. They fill the gap on the end of the flaperon. So there was a guy who reached out on the Facebook page named Jared. He was looking for some 3D models for the Kit Fox. And uh, he had the symmetrical version. He had a 3D model of that, but he needed the asymmetrical version. So. On the Kit Foxes, this, the Model 4, 5, and 6, they use a symmetrical airfoil for the flaperon. And then on the Series 7, they went to an asymmetrical flaperon. And so that file doesn't exist until now. So I decided, hey, I'm going to jump in and do that. I've got a lot of 3D modeling skills. I've done a ton of this stuff and I love to do it. So I thought, hey, I'll jump in and help make some parts. So we worked really hard over the holidays. We went back and forth testing. We knew that the first version wasn't going to be just right because I was going off of images and drawings to create what I thought was the best shape. And so I knew it wouldn't be perfect to start, but we would print and then he'd send me back pictures and give me a few measurements. And then I would just continue to refine the file. And so we did this about six or eight times until we got it totally dialed. And it was really cool working with Jared on this because he's got the Bamboo Labs X1C printer and that thing is amazing. I don't personally have one of those. I've got a Snapmaker A350, and then I've got a friend who just gave me this Prusa Mark III, which is actually a pretty good printer. It had some problems, so I had to fix it up, but it's running really well now. But with his Bamboo Labs X1C, that printer is phenomenal. That thing is so fast and so quiet and very accurate. 
I was super impressed with the quality on that machine. So, so here's just a quick note on experimental aviation and 3D printing parts for aircraft. You can't just go do this for any old aircraft, you know, especially on the certified side of things. You can't 3D print parts and go put them on. There's very few things you can do even on the certified side of things. With experimental, there's a lot more you can do. That doesn't mean that you should do it. We still need to be smart about when and where we do some of this, thinking about structural components, probably not the right place to be 3D printing parts. Thinking about these wingtips for the flaperons, it's not a structural part and it's not even required that it's on the end of the flaperon. All the structures all built into it. But having this part on there increases the aerodynamics of it and actually makes it a better part in general. The essence and nature of experimental is that you can go build something yourself and the purpose of that to be for your learning, for joy, for fun. And obviously there's a set of requirements and limitations that tie into that. And if you're not familiar, you can hit up the EAA's website and also the FAA.gov to learn more about what experimental aviation is and what things you can and cannot do. And so I created several versions, everything from a flat, simple, basic profile. It's very lightweight, a rounded profile, which this is really similar to what you will get if you buy it from Kitbox directly to this Horner style and wing tip that just has a really nice shape to it. Or you can order the Kitbox version directly from them. They're not very expensive. They're like 17 bucks a piece and they come in kind of a similar shape to this rounded profile. So that's a great option, to be honest. If you choose not to buy those parts from Kitbox, you're really only left with shaping them yourselves. But if you want a different shape or profile, for example, if you want this flat, really simple, really lightweight version, you can go with that as well. And in all of the designs, I actually put these little divots in there so that there's a little spot to put some high saw so that you can glue these in place. And also there's a little fine line in between each of these. And that will actually tell you exactly where to mark it for drilling so that you can actually drill the flapper on. Then you can put these in place, match drill it. And then you can use the high saw if you'd like to glue it in place plus riveting. And the way the spacing works on this is there's a line every one and seven eighths inches. So you end up with five rivets on the top and five on the bottom. And even though in the images or video, it looks like you see all these layer lines and that there's a lot of ruggedness to it, it's actually very fine and needs very little touch up. You could just sand these or you can micro balloon them. So pick out the style that you like best. So if you'd like, you can actually just download this file. I've linked it down below. I made it available on printables.com. If you're not already a part of the aviation community, please come join. It is such a great group of people. And I am so grateful for all the people that have helped me on my journey. I just started back in July. I officially bought the Avid and started building it. And I've met so many incredible people since then. It has been an awesome journey. So please get involved, jump into the aviation community. If you're thinking about building an airplane, work towards that goal. I know it can take a long time to build up towards that, it took me about five to seven years of planning to get there where I could finally go buy an airplane and get started. And it is an awesome journey. There's been a lot of uphill battle for sure, but it's also been a wonderful experience to be able to grow and learn through that. And so I want to just say a big thank you to all of you that are watching. And the other thing too, is if you are building and you haven't touched your airplane in a little while, get out and touch your airplane. If you just work on it a little bit every day, you chip away at it, you're going to see progress and you're going to be able to accomplish it. God has blessed me with so much and I'm so grateful for that. He has taken care of me and had my back in so many scenarios and he's paved the way for me to be able to start this YouTube channel, to be able to get the Avid and be able to start building it. And so credit and thanks goes to God. And I also want to give credit and thanks to Jared on this. He's helped me a ton on 3D printing the files, giving me the feedback. That has helped me immensely to get it dialed in. I also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to all of you who have subscribed, who watch my videos, who leave comments. Thank you so much. This has been a wonderful journey to be able to start the YouTube, to grow. I've already hit over 1,100 subscribers since last July. It has been phenomenal growth and a wonderful journey on my side. And so thank you so much for that. 
And if you're still with me, thank you. Please like this video. If you have any comments, please drop them down below. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm here to help. If you need any parts designed, hit me up. Till the next one, we'll catch you later.